Hello and welcome to my garden. So it is now mid-September and the garden's starting to look a little worn out. Things are pretty much done for the season. We've been lucky to have a very warm fall. No heavy frost yet, so I still have tomatoes coming here. Still got some carrots that uh, I'm leaving in there as long as I can. Potatoes have all been harvested. Pretty much all the onions, beets, everything are harvested and chopped up and frozen in my freezer. So today I um, wanted to just go through winterizing your drip irrigation system. This is my first year setting up drip irrigation in my garden. I absolutely loved it. It saved me so much time. I think it was a huge benefit to my garden to have that consistent watering and I'm hoping that I can do this again next year. So in Saskatchewan here, our winters are brutally cold. In the winter time, it freezes up usually by end of November, early December, and it doesn't thaw out again, usually till March. So everything is gonna be frozen solid. And I don't wanna to have to remove this irrigation line and try to pack it away and then have to bring it out again next year. So my husband and I are going to just try blowing out all the lines with the air compressor and leaving everything as is and hopefully the lines will be okay. I will probably have a bit of mulch on them once I mulch my garden to give them a little bit of insulation but really it drops to minus 30 degrees Celsius or colder um, at several points throughout the winter. So these lines are going to be frozen. So I'm hoping that draining all the water out of them will keep them okay and I will be able to run them again next year. So this here is the main starting point of my drip irrigation system. This is the where the timer, the filter and the pressure regulator all are put together to operate the drip irrigation system. So the main thing is to get this removed first. So the way I had this uh, area set up with my drip was I had the half inch tubing coming through and then off of it I had these drip lines set up into each container. This one was a sprinkler. Some of them are drips over on the tomatoes. So at the end here I just used this end cap piece to cut it off during the year so that the water doesn't go any further. So now that we are <clears throat> going to be blowing out the lines you just slide this off and you might have to pinch it a bit with with your hands or with the tool just to open it up and then we're ready to blow the the water out of there I'm just gonna leave this on here for the winter leave this open so these pieces here hopefully when we do some of the uh, the blowing out of the lines they'll get uh, cleaned out a bit as well so this is another zone here that I had set up with the drip irrigation this summer. Again, I had the, the half inch tubing running all along in between these containers and then off of there, I had kind of a spiralized system set up here in these containers with this drip line here. It has uh, drip holes every 18 inches or so. This worked out really well. I had lettuces in here. As you can see, I still have lots of carrots. I'm leaving them in there as long as I can. So again, before we blow the lines out, you wanna make sure that you have the valve open. It's kinda of hard to see, but I'm opening it up. And again, at the end here, we have this capped off with this end cap two-piece thing here. We've opened it up and it's ready to be blown so out. So the potato patch is another area that we had set up with this drip irrigation system. We had this line here, it's a half inch tubing that had drip every 18 inches. It worked great for our potatoes and we controlled it here with this on off valve. So I'm just going to open it up again so we can blow water out of this line as well. And at the other end of this line I had another valve set up here so this was set up so that I could add another line if I wanted to and control the the flow of the water into that other system. I never did get another line going this year so this was always closed off so that no water could get through 
But today when we're blowing out, of course, we're going to open it up and blow it out. So once we were sure all the lines were open, my husband just put the air compressor down into the line and started blowing. And as you can see, it, there was a lot of water still in the line, so we just keep blowing the air until no more water comes through. And as you can see here, the water stopped flowing. She should be cleaned out and good to go. Yep. So I've brought these parts indoors now because I'm going to get them cleaned up and store them in the garage over the winter. As you can see, our water has got a lot of rust in it. It's got a lot of salt and minerals in it so everything is pretty crusty so i think just to kind of clean it up before i store it away from the winter i got some vinegar here just going to give everything a good cleaning got a little toothbrush here just to try and get all that build up off of here so that it doesn't seize up on me next year i would also recommend removing the battery out of your timer for the season just so it doesn't, you know, get corroded or anything. You can refresh it with some new batteries. Okay, so everything's got a bit of a brushing in vinegar. I just rinsed everything in some water. So we got the filter here. We got the pressure regulator pieces all cleaned up. The timer's cleaned up pretty good. Make sure you take the batteries out. Every, let everything dry real good and just store them away for the winter. So winterizing my drip irrigation system is one thing off of my to-do list here for the fall in the garden. I hope you found it helpful. Um, if you don't have a drip irrigation system, I highly recommend planning it for next year's garden. I've got a few videos on my channel you can check out. So please hit that like button, leave a comment, and if you haven't already done so, subscribe so that you don't miss out on future videos coming to the channel. Thanks for watching.